Thank you very thank you very much, Professor Witten, for this really wonderful talk. So again, I think we should have time for just a few questions. I think the first question was over there. Does it work? This was an impressive talk. I'm sure many people are impressed. I'm also sure that with your work, you're making the best out of your extraordinary capabilities. I'm not quite sure, however, if you're fully aware of the responsibility towards science, the search for the laws of nature. It's, it was Isaac Newton who said, that nature created everything by number, weight, and measure. Thus, it's the theoretical physicist's business to predict numbers and the experimentalist's business to measure these numbers. And as everybody can see, supersymmetry and string theory did not, in the past 30 years, did not deliver a single result which Isaac Newton had called physics. So, aren't you afraid of being the scientific leader of an entire epoch of physics that might lead to nowhere? Aren't you afraid of misguiding the concentrated intelligence of seven billion people on a planet? Of course, Excuse nobody me. Can, I think course, your, nobody your scientific question is now pretty clear. I it was about the predictivity of string theory, and I think Edward is happy to uh, answer this aspect of the question. Thank you. I think he's not afraid to listen to me. Um, uh, yeah, but I think maybe your speech is unnecessary. Uh, I think you've nobody, made your point no, clear enough. Nobody can and you should give me the wrong. chance to answer. But it's the history of science which gives a clear indication. The real revolution in physics, they have always been pushed forward by skeptic individuals, never by the euphoria of the many. And this is where your problem lies. Your risk is that you're playing mathematical games of which the link to reality is still a promise, concepts of which the link to the physical reality you do not uh, understand. I think, I think like it's, I think it's time for you to give me the chance to answer, sir. Sir, I think I you've think adequately made your point. I'm, I'm and now it's time finishing. for you to give me the chance I'm to answer. I Excuse like me, to, I think we should also give time to other like people. To so please, please now give Professor Edward give the chance to answer your question. Thank you. I, I would like to uh, reflect. I think you've asked uh, several questions, so now you should give me the chance to answer. Get back to the so the first point, in it, by way of reply, is that um, sometimes things take time. The Higgs particle was just a hypothesis for 50 years, and there were plenty of skeptics about it. Uh, neutron stars were regarded as science fiction. And gravitational waves seemed hopelessly undetectable when Einstein first um, proposed them, predicted them. And the fact that eventually an incredible story involving uh, the binary pulsar made it possible to discover them was totally unforeseeable. Uh, quantum mechanics and gravity do exist, and it's, yet they don't work together in the known framework of physics. It's inevitable for humans to try to understand how they can work, work together. And when a framework is discovered that makes it inevitable to have quantum mechanics and gravity together rather than impossible, as in the standard framework, it's inevitable that people take it seriously and explore it. And finally, string theory has, gotten a lot, has given us a lot of insight about better understanding physical theories we already have, suggesting that it knows an awful lot about the real world, even if we don't know very much of what it knows. So I think, in brief, those might be three facets of the story you'd want to take into account. I think we should go on to other questions. Yes. Are there other questions, please? Yeah. 